COP27 represents the halfway milestone to achieving the SDGs until 2030, since their initial launch in 2015. Policymakers from all around the world are coming together to mobilize more resources to tackle the climate change problem that we are all facing. One critical issue that deserves a lot more attention from policymakers are the raw materials that are required to achieve the net zero transition, such as copper, lithium, cobalt, nickel, and rare earth elements. The technologies that are required to achieve net zero, such as solar and wind energy or electric vehicles, are a lot more material intensive than conventional technologies. For example, an electric vehicle requires approximately six times the metals that are required by a conventional car of the same size. If you want to achieve the climate targets, we actually have to roll out solar and wind energy by approximately 20 times more than we have today, and electric vehicles by approximately 150 more times. Combined with the higher material intensity of those technologies, this is going to lead to a surge in demand for critical raw materials. Interestingly, countries that are driving the climate action are really the ones that are most dependent on other countries to provide those critical raw materials. For example, the United States and Europe both rely approximately 80 to 90% for their rare earth element imports on one single country, which is China. The picture is overall very similar for the other raw materials that are necessary for the net zero transition. Approximately 70% of all nickel is currently mined in the Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa. Approximately 50% of all nickel is provided by Philippines and Indonesia. And almost 75% of all lithium is provided by Australia, Chile and Bolivia. We at White Shield believe that starting from 2025, there's going to be a huge supply deficit that is only going to multiply over the coming decades. This supply deficit is going to undermine the achievement of the Paris Climate Agreement target of keeping global warming under 2 degrees. Also, it's going to delay all of the climate action that countries have currently committed to. So if you're really serious about tackling climate change, we have to increase our sources of supply here locally in countries with higher ESG standards than where we're currently producing most of our critical raw materials. Secondly, we have to increase the recycling rates that are currently extremely low, less than 1% for lithium and rare earth elements. Thirdly, we have to in general reduce our consumption rates, otherwise there's going to be a significant supply deficit that undermines the whole climate agenda.